right, we are going live. It looks like we're going to be on time. Be on time, just a little bit of a pregame show, a little bit of a pregame show. This is a double boot, double boot on this one, so hopefully we're going to have good audio. Let's see what happens. Stig's in the house, Kyle's in the house. All right, we are. And it does sound good. So the double boot, the double boot routine is working, folks, is working. Absolutely. I did a double boot start on the show. And we're going to talk a little bit about elegance, folks. Elegance. Had a little bit of a debate the other day. Some folks were saying it doesn't matter how you dress. doesn't matter your appearance. doesn't matter. You can be tremendously successful if you wear a bunch of uh, some beat up, torn up uh, slacks that were made in China. And a, a hoodie that was also made in China that's a little bit soiled. It looks like you slept in it for a week that you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine with that kind of a situation. So we're going to discuss that a little bit and debate that concept, the concept of dressing like a slob. What do you think? We're going to talk about that. Somebody said that they went in to an AD, a couple of ADs, high-end watches, and they were dressed kind of like a slob, and um, they are with their girlfriend. Now, the girlfriend could have been classy. That could have been the whole thing. But anyway, they are with their girlfriend. And they said that they were treated really nice. They were really treated with respect. And the gentleman was wearing a 231 at the time. He was wearing one of those at the time. And I responded. I said, well, you know, maybe, maybe it's the 231 that got you the respect. <laughs> maybe that was enough to overcome the attire. So what do you guys think about that? Controversial topic on the show today. The lovely Bree is in the house, and she might be calling in today. She, she would have a few words about elegance. Matter of fact, I've got a photo here I can show. i got a photo here I can show of the lovely Bree that we took here. And she's wearing a nice, nice dress and a nice uh, top coat. And looking kind of elegant, I would say. Looking kind of elegant. So... We'll ask her. Maybe she can call in and we'll ask her opinion. And let's see, John's in the house. Kind of new here, but Craig reminds me of a sober, better-mannered Archie luxury. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, John. All right. I love it. I love it. So we're going to be talking about elegance and, and take a look at the 002 on wrist. Whoops, let me see if I can get that in focus. The 00, look at that second hand. Pretty freaking, pretty freaking amazing, if you ask me. The 002 Stunner on wrist. So, um, Stig's in the house. All right, let's look at a few more elegant photos here. This is a photo that I took at an event at a client's. It was Searsville Mansion. And uh, these young ladies were modeling some different dresses, some evening wear dresses, and very elegant, very elegant. Now, what do you think? You think you think one of those young ladies that they'd be happy if their date for the evening was wearing some soiled jeans made in China, maybe stretch jeans, and a uh, a t-shirt and a, a baseball cap on backwards, and about a four-day uh, uh, beard, four-day shadow. Uh, and just got back from working on their truck. What do you think? You think that would be a good um, a good way to go? Uh, okay, so let's give another example. This is, was taken at my local AD, my local Rolex AD, and they were having a fundraiser, and they were dressed, a lot of the young ladies were dressed like uh, Audrey Hepburn in... Um, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, that like that character, right? And this young lady was dressed like that, and I took that picture. She's actually she actually works there at Colonial Jewelers, or she did at the time. And what do you think? Do you think she would be okay if her date for that evening was was kind of dressed like a slob? What do you think? How would that go over? Let's give a couple more examples here. Same event. Same event. And this young lady was there also working for Colonial, and they're dressed up and so on. 
And what do you think? What do you think? How, how would that go? Blue's in the house. He says, nice shirt. Well, thank you. And John, uh, kind of knew. Okay, I already read that one. Wow, nice pick. Okay. Kyle, things are, things are going down the tube. Government is, is planting masks. The only comfort is our host so elegantly dressed. Stig in the house. Sure, I can call in. Excellent. Let me show a couple more photos, Bree, and call in. Call in when you wish. This is um, <clears throat> this is Miss Marilyn, and she uh, obviously was dressed a little bit elegant. And we'll show a few more. And this is the lovely Audrey. This was at an event, a New Year's Eve event that she was uh, hoop dancing at. And even when she's hoop dancing, you can see she dressed a, a little bit elegant, a little bit elegant, a little bit kind of classy. So what do you think? And her date for the evening was wearing a tux. So, and here's this young lady who was posing with Audrey. And uh, she's dressed kind of elegant too. So let's look at a few more. Here's Audrey again at the same event with another young lady who's dressed kind of elegant. You notice the theme here? There's Audrey in that same outfit. Uh, and here's Audrey at a fashion show. And let's see what the last one is. Same thing, Audrey at the fashion show. Okay, so there you go. What do you think? <clears throat> you think these young ladies take the time and effort to dress up like this. And they're getting ready to go to the party to the event. Let's say it's an event at Little Treasury Jewelers. Let's say it's one of Steve's events, right? And they're dressed up. They take the time to dress up really elegant. And <laughs> and the guy shows up at the door, okay? Not not exaggerating. And he's wearing some, uh, some Nikes <clears throat> that are kind of a little bit, little bit tore up and kind of have an odor to them. And he's wearing stretch jeans from that he bought at Walmart that are made in China. And he's he's got a a worn out belt that he had to he had to punch a couple of extra holes in it. And he kind of punched those a little bit crooked. And then he's wearing a a, a t shirt that was a freebie from the local radio station that's kind of soiled and a little bit worn out. And then he um He's got a baseball cap on backwards, and he greets her with a big smile, and he, um, you know, didn't bother to shave for a couple days. What do you think? How, you think that would go over nice when he's there picking up? Um, that's probably the look on her face. <laughs> that's probably the look on her face <laughs> when he comes to the door. <laughs> oh, boy. That would be the thing. Um, Stig says, well, Lady Brianna... It is my impression that in this country, ladies are dressing up for each other. They have giving up on men. What do you think? We're going to ask the lo lovely uh, Brianna if she calls in. We'll see what she says. And John says, I dress like a sob 97% of the time. The other 3% is what my wife makes me wear. <laughs> there you go. John in the house. I, You know, here's the thing. I have nothing against dressing dressing casual. Most of the time I dress casual these days. But even when you do that, you can you take it up a notch, right? You can wear Bill's khakis instead of some really you know, some Dockers or something. You can buy you can wear a pair of um Levi's 501s uh, that were made in the USA back in the day, right? Uh, really high quality pair of jeans if you will as opposed to the cheap Chinese junk uh, you can wear a nice belt you can wear a nice pair of boat shoes that are made in these United States of America high end so even casual you can bring it up a notch or two I think it helps I think it 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 stacks the deck the the decks the deck a little bit more in your favor. That's my thought process on this. So uh, when the lovely Lady Bree calls in, we will get her opinion on it. We'll get her opinion on it. And meanwhile, while I'm waiting, I'm going to check a few of these tabs. We're going to close out a few of these tabs from yesterday's show. There's a Grand Seiko that we were looking at that's an absolute stunner, stunner alert on the channel. And there's another picture of it. 
and then there's a signet ring that we looked at and that's a video that I was showing and that is a yacht master that we didn't get the lovely Bree's opinion on I wonder if she's still watching before she's gonna call in I wonder if she likes that now this is not a good photo by the way that blue dial actually looks kinda stunning in real life uh, so I wonder if she saw that the other day when we were talking about that as a potential watch for the lovely Lady Breeze. See, that's a 29 mil watch, 29 millimeters. It might look great on her wrist. <clears throat> we may have to uh, see if we can find one of those in real life for her to try on. L. Ron Hubbard's in the house. I was the fashion icon of my time. Craig should look up my fashion. Oh, there you go. There you go. There's an old book called Dress for Success. I think that was the name of it, wasn't it? That was pretty fascinating. He actually did some studies where he had someone dress up with, he just did like with and without a tie. Just that made that change, that one change. And he, he'd have them go in and try to cash a check at a bank, right? And, and see if they'd let him cash it, right, without any ID or anything, just let him cash the check. And the times when he went in wearing the tie, they let him cash it, right? <laughs> and the times that he wasn't wearing the tie, they said, sorry, we can't help you, right? And he even did studies where I think he had people, like, speeding through, like, a, a speed trap or something, right? And the, the guy that was wearing the tie and dressed nice and all, didn't get the ticket right <laughs> and the other guy got the ticket so there was different different studies that he did um, <laughs> to uh, to see the effect that <clears throat> being dressed nice would have right in d different situations John's and Nash Yachtmaster is one of one of the most underrated watches love it on rubber goes with the slob look well and John, I'll tell you, I love the case shape of that watch. That watch basically, now this is more for a woman, right? This is the 29 mil. But I think the case shape is, is similar, if not the same. It's got the case shape more like the, um, the chronograph, the, the, the Daytona, right? It's got that older, really classic oyster case, sport oyster case, if you will. Which, my gosh, why didn't they use that same case for the sub? What were they thinking? What were they thinking? L. Ron Hubbard, Craig, don't tell the Scientologist I'm here. They have been waiting for me to come back since the 80s. I'm enjoying my sabbatical. We, we, Mom is the wor word on this channel. We, we don't let the cat out of the bag here. Uh, Leon's in the house. I don't have that issue with my bank, whether I dress like a slob or nicely. They know me, so I have no problem. There you go. Well, you probably pretty much own the bank, too, so there's that. Yeah, if you've got you know, millions of dollars deposited in there, I think you can pretty much do what you want. There are other ways to stack the deck, right? There's a, it's, it's like when I call Apple, if I call Apple support, right? Uh, we'll finish that thought later. Here comes, here comes a, a call. Let me pull it up. Pull up the call. Okay. The lovely Bree. All right. We're going to talk about elegance. Hello, uh, everyone. Get my headset on here. All right, lovely Bree. <clears throat> Got to get your opinion on a couple of things. A couple of people asked a couple of questions here. All so, righty. Um, what do you think? First of all, we, we showed we showed all these things and we showed some pictures of, of some elegant ladies well dressed at different events. I don't know if you saw those photos. But, yes, I did. Okay. And and so and somebody made a comment in here. They said um they think that the ladies just dress up for each other and that they've kind of given up on on their date also dressing nice. <laughs> <laughs> with them um what do you think have you have, have you guys given up or or are you are you are you flattered if someone comes to pick you up to take you to an elegant event if they're dressed really nice i mean what how do you react 
to that sort of thing. Yeah, I would be really glad to have a date, you know, to get to go to an elegant dinner and dancing if it's an option. And, and, and okay, so you'd love to do that. Okay, so we understand that, of course. A beautiful young lady loves to do that. Okay, but my question is, what happens if your date comes to the door and he's wearing some some stretch jeans that he bought from Walmart that are a little bit worn out, have a little, some maybe some oil stains on them, and he's wearing some Nikes that are a couple of years old, maybe have a couple of holes in them, and he's wearing a T-shirt from the local radio station that he's had a couple of years, might have a couple of holes in it, but, you know, it, it's okay. And then he's got a baseball cap turned on, on backwards, and he forgot to shave for a couple of days, and he was bringing to a, to a really elegant event and you were dressed in the dress that you're wearing right now, okay, which is the dress I showed earlier. Um, how, how would you react to that? Um, well, I would just say in a nice way, you know, I don't think you're not dressed up for the event. <laughs> and, you know, we, say, oh, maybe we could do this another time, but I can't. <laughs> you, you actually wouldn't even go. Head. You wouldn't even go with them. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So yeah, that would they, be a they need to step up. That would be a no go. <laughs> All right. Well, let I tell you what. Let's do this. Show us the dress. Uh, let stand up and let us see see the dress you're wearing, so that we know. They might not remember the photo that we showed earlier. Oh, you can't probably get it all in. I like right there. Okay, so at least we can get most of it. Okay, so turn around. Let's see it all the way around. Oh, very elegant. Very elegant. Yeah. And so, so my gosh, if you took the time to dress up and did your hair and everything like that, and then he yeah. came, and then he came to the door dressed like I described, that would not go over well. No, it wouldn't be satisfying. <laughs> okay. All right, so folks, let me know in the chat what you guys think about that. What do you think about that? You're hearing from her right now. And put any questions that you have for Bree in the chat. Uh, let's see. Kyle says, we are still in pursuit of the perfect watch. Absolutely, we're always in, have that pursuit going on. Leon says, Quag, why do you like the Yachtmaster? You hate the other two-tone watches, but you like the Yachtmaster. Well, Leon, I would probably prefer the the yacht master with the platinum bezel. That would be my first choice because that way it would all look like the same color. I that I can go with two tone. I mean, I'm not totally against two tone, but I would rather go with the yacht master with the platinum bezel or the all gold yacht master, the one that's all 18 karat yellow gold. But two tone is not out of the question. And did you see the one we showed earlier, Bree? The yacht master. No, I don't think okay, I did. Okay, you didn't see it. Okay, um, <clears throat> maybe we'll show it after you after you go out and you can see because it's one that might fit you. Oh, okay. um, let's see. Uh, let's see what. Let me catch up on this. Um, I make the most, if not all, deposits via ATM. Don't want them to think I'm robbing the joint now that I have to wear a mask everywhere. You know, he's, he's going into the bank. The slob look is in, Craig. You are just the outlier. Yeah, so he's saying it's normal for guys to dress pretty much like slobs. Um, what do you think, Bree? No, it's not. I mean, if you're going to grocery shopping, maybe, yeah. But if it's a real date, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Yeah, see, uh, some girls are going to be nice, and they're going to say, oh, it really doesn't matter, and all that. But right. they're not that's really, that's not really true. They really want the guy want to dress the nice. the person to dress up, yeah. Yeah. So, see, she's being honest. On this channel, we're, we're honest about these things. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, and Deport TV says, damn, Craig is describing me. <laughs> In other words, the, when, the, that he'd be dressed like that. Uh-oh, I don't think so. L. Ron Hubbard says, I believe her type are old men with lots of money to shower her. Sh to shower her, I guess it means with gifts. Um, uh, well, I mean, she, she 
doesn't mind generosity, and um, we're going to show her website later, briefitdance.com, with links where you can absolutely send her gifts and uh, yeah, become, a, <laughs> become a Patreon. And because she wants to be a creative, she wants to create content full time, and it takes money to do these things. And so, yeah, absolutely. Time and money. And I don't, I think most girls want to be with successful men don't you think that's true and some of them probably don't admit it they don't say that right they try to be nice and say well you know as long as he's a nice guy i don't care if he's broke and you know heavily in debt and doesn't work and sits at home in, in his mom's basement watching tv all the time it's okay with me you know as long as he's a nice guy but i don't think that's really the case i don't think most women look for that what do you think Bree? No, I don't think that's. No, I don't. I don't think that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's a thing. Type. I don't think that's my type. That's not a thing. It okay. might be other per people's type, but not mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, in that case, okay. Um, okay, who does fine that way? Uh, not my style. The Rolex suit me. Uh, the Rolex suit and tie for me. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Saw a Rhodium Dial Yachtmaster yesterday at the AD, 11,500, a 37 mil. Okay. Yeah, but for a guy, I, I think you'd want the 40 mil um, I, on that, I think. I would think. Uh, <coughs> Leon's in the house. A Rolex su sub opens all doors. Look at Hemingway. He dressed like a bum all the time, but he wore a Rolex sub and doors open for him. Well, if you're Hemingway, that's a, that's a little bit different, <laughs> I think. And if you're, you know, if you're like um, uh, in the Keys, the Florida Keys or something. But even then, wear a nice, nice swimsuit and a nice, um, you know, maybe a Hawaiian shirt or something and a gold Rolex or something. That'd be fine. You know, it depends on where you are also, right? So let's see, um, Lady Brianna, you may be part of a dying race, but please keep it up. Nicely dressed, dressed women are God's gift to the world. There you go. Thank you. And um, very true. So uh, let's see, John Lt. Reverso Classic, small uh, duetto is a classy, elegant woman's watch. My wife loves hers. Okay. Um, uh, hello, Craig and uh, Br Brigade. Brigade. Uh, B R I G A D E. Brigade. Is that a new n name for Brianna? Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, all right. We're caught up. We're caught up all of a sudden on the comments. I'm trying to think what else. What else we can talk about with regard to elegance? Um, oh, shoes. Oh, shoes. Shoes are important. Absolutely. Now, you know, I had a woman tell me many, many years ago. I, w I was it was I was well dressed and I I met her and her husband and she looked at my shoes and she complimented me on my shoes, how they were nicely polished and, you know, nice dress shoes. And she told me that one of the first things that a lady does is she she notices a man's shoes is that true is that something you notice yeah actually i think for men it's more of the face and nails <laughs> uh, it's for the th for the yeah for, but but the lady us, you know yeah, we you, want to know if they're dressing up like with ties or with nice polished shoes so if they're taking the time and effort Yes. I guess. That that shows respect to you, I guess. It does. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, the woman of my time paid to be with me. I will allow other men to pay for her services. I'm sure she provided excellent services, as you can attest to. I don't know who you're talking about there, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard is a little bit of a troll, just so you know. And of oh, course, okay. that of course that's not his real name. Um, and at some point, he might actually get hit by a wrench. That's a possibility. Mr. Q's in the house. 
Beauty and elegance are under an egregious attack by leftist feminism and radical media. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, absolutely. I guess that's right. Uh, let's see. Mr. Q, uh, very true, says Lance. Lance, what do you think? You, Lance seems like a classy guy. He's from Connecticut. He's probably got he a does. lot. Of, he's probably got a lot of money, by the way, Bree. So just so you know, just give you a heads up. Uh, Good-looking guy too. Uh, okay, so Mr. Q, ladies need handmade goods. Made in the USA is best. Absolutely, I think Bree is is going upscale to where she is getting really, really, you know. Picky, uh, not not picky. Uh, what's a better word for that? Um, what's a better word for? Uh, uh, why can't I think of the better word? For choosing. Uh, uh, selective. Um, oh, selective. Anyway, she's 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 she's, uh, she's taking her time now, and because you've got a fair number of clothes and and things, and so now you can start picking, you know, the higher quality items to kind of you know, grow your, your wardrobe and your accessories and, and so on, right? Right. And buy some things that um, that are really, really take things to the next level. Yeah, I think that's a good, um, I think that's a good idea. All right, no comments from Lance. I was hoping we'd get some comments from Lance on the subject. Lance, what do you think? We were talking, you came in late, and we were talking about if a lady dresses up nice for a date, show us the dress one more time. So in case Lance didn't see it, um, if the guy comes to the comes to the door and and the lovely Brie is wearing this dress, okay, can't really see it all, but you can you can get enough of an idea. And she's wearing this this elegant dress. How should he be dressed when he when he comes to the door? That that's the question here that we're talking about. All right. Bree, come on back, come on back. Okay, so um, let us know. Let us know what you think. How should he be dressed when he comes to the door? Also, what watch should he be wearing? That's a good, good thing to ask. Good question. Let's see. Stig says elegance is different to some. It comes naturally, like Lady Brianna and 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 Craig. To others like me, you just have to observe and learn. There you go. Well, I had a um, I had a friend of mine who was an attorney many, 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 many years ago, and he had no clue how to dress. And so, yeah, I did help him with with some things, some basics, and uh, kind of turned Good. things around because his his wardrobe was a mess. It was an absolute mess, and so we turned that around a little bit. And you can do that. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Lance is an odd boy, but his wealth should satisfy the lady. Give him a chance. You can boost his confidence. I'll tell you what, he's, he's a class act all the way around. He's taking golfing lessons. He's, he's you know, uh, going to be a really good golfer, which is good because, you know, when you're doing business deals, sometimes business deals are done on the golf course. So that's, that's good that he's taking golfing lessons. And he's interested in watches. Yeah, that's like right. And Blue luxurious. says Lance has some money, and with Craig's help and better taste in watches. Yeah, we're we're consulting with him a little bit on the watches because some of the watches he brings forward are a little bit questionable, but some of them are really nice. Uh, and Kyle's asking, did he get a new watch? He's he has gone silent in the chat at 5:23. Oh, here he is, 5:27. He just popped in, Craig. Oh. The man should be dressed in a formal attire. Example, a sport coat and a tie. He should also be wearing a luxury gold stunner on his wrist. There uh, you go. There you go. Lance has got his act together. He's going he places. You mark my word. Lance is going places. He's younger than you, by the way, Bree. Oh, yeah. He's in high school. Yeah, he's younger than you, so... Uh, Jaden's in the house. He says, Craig, you should do a state of the collection with Lance. Should get down to one watch. Well, hopefully we've got to find out which watches he's managed to sell because I gave him I gave him the okay to sell a bunch of those watches. So maybe he's done that. Maybe he hasn't. But, yeah, we need to start working on that. Um, 
Let's see, Beyond Written Word says men should wear something James Bond wore in the movies. There you go. Especially the older Bonds. The, the um, Pierce Brosnan, he dressed really, really well. Uh, Sean Connery dressed really well. Uh, the latest Bond, not quite so much, but anyway, still okay. Uh, let's see. All right, I think we are caught up. How do they find you on social media, Bree? To go to briefitdance.com and you'll find all the social media links there. And also ways you can donate and also Patreon. If you want to be a Patreon, $5 a month or 25 Starting point, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, folks, before we let her go, get any last-minute questions in here, because uh, every time this happens, she leaves, and then you got a question for her after she's left. So, so please put the questions in now, and so we can do that before she she dodges out. Uh, let's see. Here's a question from Blue Bree: Is there ever such thing as overly nice dressed? In other words, overdressed, dressed too nice. Oh. Um, well, what, like, what, like, how nice, like? Well, let's say, all right, let's take it to the extreme. Let's say that you're going out to dinner somewhere, and okay. somewhere nice, and you're wearing the dress you're wearing now. Okay. And they came to the door, and they were wearing a, a tuxedo. Oh, a tuxedo. And, and I thought that was for, like, weddings. <laughs> yeah, but let's say they were wearing a tuxedo to take you out to dinner. Um, R a nice I tuxedo now, nice tuxedo, a nice highly fine. polished shoes and all that, and a gold, gold stunner on wrist. I think it's fine. So there I you think go. It's re really representable. So there you go. I don't think you can overdress if you're if if Bree took the time to dress in a nice elegant dress. And you even wore like a dinner jacket, like a white dinner jacket, you know, a formal dinner jacket type of thing. Or you wore a, just a straight up tux. I think you're fine. I think you're fine. Now, yeah. if you were just going to lunch somewhere, you probably should just wear a sport coat, you know, and a tie or something. You probably shouldn't be wearing a tux because it's going to look like you might work there or something. Right, right. Um, so, but if you're going somewhere for a nice dinner... That's right, probably nice okay. Dress. Probably okay. She's dressed kind of formally, and you dress formally. That's probably okay. Let's see here. Uh, Kevin says, also, properly fitting clothing for men is important. Uh, the undershirt shouldn't be visible. There you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lance... Uh, take care i i'm not sure what that is oh okay beyond written words says brie do you have a boyfriend now before you answer that before you answer that it's you know you don't have to answer personal questions you know on this channel that's kind of kind of personal but um well, i think yeah. we can safely assume that she has friends that are boys but that said, if you want to step up and, like I say, go go to her um, briefitdance.com, become a Patreon, uh, start reaching out. Um, she doesn't have an engagement ring on her finger, as far as I can tell. So, you know, um, diamonds, diamonds speak. Diamonds make statements. It's <coughs> the way I see it. Uh, let's see. One more in the wrench will drop, says Mr. Q. <laughs> uh, Stig says, by the way, Lady Brianna, this dress of yours is stunning. Uh, keep it up that way, okay? There Thank you, you go. Uh, and Jaden says, I end up wearing a suit sometimes at a, a Little League game. Yeah, why not? Finally, we found Q. Okay, let's do one more time. Let's let's show them the dress, but this time you might have to retilt the camera so they can see the whole thing. Okay. Because last know. time you were kind of cut off. So let's let them see the dress one more time. Put your hair back a little bit so they can see your B and all that good stuff. There we go. There's the lovely Bree modeling the dress for you.
Absolutely, yep. Very elegant. I think he could absolutely come to the door with a tux if you were wearing that that dress. Why not? Okay. Yes, we'll try to find more. All right, folks. So there we go. We've got, um, I think we nailed that. We got that answered. And I'm going to show your website after you go out. But watch. Come back in the chat. I want you to see the watch. We're going to show the okay. watch that we talked about, the Yacht Master. And let's see. Beyond Written Words says, uh, very nice. There you go. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for calling in, Bree. It, you always brighten up the show. Thank you. And I'm going to show your web everybody. website. And let me know in the chat what you think about the Yacht Master that we're going to show. All right. I'll let you know. All right. The lovely oh. Bree, BreeFitDance.com. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's show the Yacht Master again. The Yacht Master. Here we go. And this is a 29 mil watch. This is 18 karat gold and steel, yellow gold and steel. It's got micro adjustments. I don't mind the fact that this has the older clasp and with the micro adjustments. I think that's cool. I'm hip to that. And this is box and papers. So. A, a little bit more sporty than if she got like a date just or something like that a lady date whatever you want to call the the ladies version with the date so this would definitely be a little sportier okay so food for thought on that and the lovely Bree can let us know in the chat what she thinks about that oh and while we're doing that since I promised I would do it, let's show her website. BreeFitDance.com. BreeFitDance.com. Uh, let's see. Um, this L Run 100 chap, what does L stand for? Lucifer. <laughs> if anyone can clarify. <clears throat> let's see. Older clasp is better on the Rolex. I don't know what you mean. That is a Rolex. Um, not sure exactly what you mean, Jaden, on that. But in any event, yes, the clasps on the Rolex, that, that quote, stamped clasps that they had for many, many years, they worked fine for me. I never had a problem with them. They worked fine. Uh, and Bree says, very nice. Okay, so she does like the Yacht Master. Okay, good. That's good to know. We're going to have to find a place that has that size in stock so we can see if it will fit you. And then we can figure that out. Okay, Lance sent an email. So we'll get right on that. We'll get right on it. Uh, and this is an Air King. Let's see which Air King in question. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This is the older Air King, which is cool. I, I think the older Air Kings are cool. Nice classic Rolex piece. Now that is not a chronometer, but it is a Oyster Perpetual. So it wouldn't be for me because I've gotten really spoiled by the accuracy of the Grand Seikos. But for somebody that just wants a a nice solid Rolex, I'll give two thumbs up for this. I think it's cool. Now, would I want it on a strap? Probably not, but it's a very attractive price. Buy it now, price of $2,800, but a $40 shipping fee. So I don't know what you'd have to pay for one of those on a bracelet, how much more, but uh, that's the question. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Bitcoins are the girl's best friend now. Yeah, maybe she would rather have a Bitcoin than a diamond ring. Okay, let's ask Bree. Let's ask her in the chat if she's still hanging out. 
Which would you rather have? A Bitcoin? One whole Bitcoin? Or a diamond ring? <clears throat> Which would you rather have? One whole Bitcoin or a diamond ring? Okay. Kyle says, oh yes, now that is a good watch. Air King equals lovely, beyond words. Uh, Brie, beautiful dress. Yeah, but Kyle, would you want to pay a little more and get one on a bracelet? Do tell. Uh, beautiful dress. You need to find more really classy. That Air King is a redial. Loomed hands, but no loom on the indices. Interesting. Somebody is sharp. Somebody is observant. Somebody is observant. Wow. Caught that. Caught that. Obviously, it's, it's rather affordable, and sometimes they're affordable for a reason, right? Sometimes they're affordable for a reason. Blues in the house. I almost bought a 36 Rolex Oyster Perpetual, but the 34 looked good on my wrist, too. Okay. 34 Air King may be too big. Well, it's definitely, that wouldn't work for Brie. Um, we know that. I mean, she's got to be under 30 for sure. Uh, let's see. Blue says, At Brie is a true gift to us gentlemen. Absolutely she is. Oh, yes, one whole Bitcoin would be better. <laughs> Brie is nobody's dummy. <laughs> she is nobody's dummy. She says, I'll take the Bitcoin <laughs> with an explanation point. Oh, yes. With an explanation point. Kyle's in the house. I have one and it's on a bracelet. So lu lucky I don't have to worry about that. But if I were in the market for one, I would just get a 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual. Hmm. So the Air King. Did the Air King come in both 34 and 36? What were the sizes of this particular Air King? Um, 30, this one's 34, but th did it also come in 36 or did it only come in 34? So if that's the case, I think you're right. I would rather go for the Oyster Perpetual probably. Probably. And look how we're eating up the time. It's already 541. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Uh, let's see. And Blue says, so, so close to buying it. Blue, do tell which one are you close to buying? What are you close to buying? The 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 thirty six millimeter Royce Perpetual white dial? Is that what you're close to buying? I think that's cool. Jaden's in the house. I didn't mean thirty four millimeter uh I didn't mean thirty four millimeter would be too big for me, Craig. Okay. I'm not sure what you're saying there exactly, but it's steel blue okay uh, let's see um, I wonder what would what about an oyster perpetual in solid gold did they make those back in the day or were they for 14 karat gold do tell let us know in the chat what about a 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual all gold? Let's see here. Um, <laughs> but it's not no titanium. Air King came in 34 millimeters, replaced by the 34 millimeter Oyster Perpetual in 2014. We're getting the scoop now. And then the Air King came back larger in 2015. Okay, I'm with you now. I'm hip now. So, yeah, I think the Oyster Perpetual would be the way to go. Then, if that is the case. <clears throat> so, I do think the Air King is kind of cool. Uh, for somebody who has a smaller wrist, it might not be a bad move. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Q, I would recommend that Bree gets a sports piece on steel first, on the affordable side, then build up to the gold as appreciation is a journey. Um, I think what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get a lifetime watch for the lovely Brie. 
so something that will be serviceable and useful indefinitely for her so that's why I think if it's a Rolex I think it's got to be a six digit unit uh, to be forward looking right it's going to be those are going to be serviceable for a long time right if you the, here's the problem if you go too back back too far you're going to start having issues and this is going to be a watch that she's going to literally wear all the time and so I think it's got to be a six digit unit now that yacht master we just showed what is a six digit unit let's go back to that this is a a six digit unit I think that would be a very robust a very robust piece and for a lady I think steel and gold is a good choice because it'll kind of go with anything it'll go with her gold jewelry it'll go with anything you know steel color that she's wearing it's kind of it's kind of very versatile now would it be ni nicer to be all gold maybe maybe but if she's wearing it all the time I think maybe the steel and gold might be the way to go now does that have solid in links can somebody tell me can somebody confirm uh, being a six digit I'm guessing it does let's look closer at these photographs see if we can see the back end of this thing where's a photo showing the back end there we go yeah they're solid in links I'm pretty sure those are solid a little bit blurry but um, yeah there's a close-up yeah they're solid in links so and I'm and I'm guessing those center links though the gold links there it looks like those are not solid on this particular six digit piece uh, let me know in the chat what you think about that that could be a slight downside on the steel and gold uh, if those are hollow links uh, let's see um, so we're gonna measure seven times and cut once is what we're gonna do on the Brie watch we're not gonna be hasty about it uh, we're gonna make sure we get something really nice okay all right here we got a couple of watch here's here's one from Kevin we're gonna take a look at here give me a second I'll pull this up automatic presage okay three hundred and seventy six dollars so of course that's probably gold plated right yeah gold plated yellow gold plated it's still it's an elegant looking piece I'm not a fan of plated watches just because they tend to wear out the plating you know tends to wear off them but there's a nice deployant clasp that is nice uh, and I'm guessing that that yeah that's a calf imprinted cra calf strap imprinted um, to look like croc obviously a very affordable watch so that's a possibility okay uh, let's see what Lance sent here's a rare oyster perpetual that Lance dug up Lance dug up a rare oyster perpetual for close to 8,000 1958 and let's take a look at these pictures It's got micro adjustments, which I like. It's got a president bracelet with micro adjustments. I wonder if this bracelet was stock on this watch. It looks like that end link doesn't fit exactly right. You know, doesn't look. Um, and I don't know that you could ever get a president bracelet on a, on an Oyster Perpetual. So I'm not sure that that bracelet came with that watch, folks. See where it doesn't fit right. So that could be a fail. Um, that could be a fail on that one. Interesting though. Interesting though. <clears throat> we we continually learn. Uh, blues in the house. It's a nice. It's a nice gift for your nephew. A uh, very nice design. Okay, not sure what we're talking about there. All right. Hey, we might actually end the show early today. <clears throat> we might do that. Uh, get your questions in, folks. I wish there was a modern rendition of that gold oyster perpetual. 
I agree. A six-digit would be cool. <clears throat> Mr. Q says, I'm no Craig, but has there been a skin tone analysis to see what precious metal suits Brie the best? Well, trust me, 18 karat yellow gold, uh, it doesn't matter what your complexion is. <laughs> 18 karat yellow gold works every time it's tried. It has for thousands of years. There's a reason why people all over the world want yellow gold, right? And have for thousands of years. So, yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with uh, 18 karat yellow freaking gold. And, of course, it would look gorgeous on Brie. Of course it would. Let's see. Um, Craig, have you taken the diver to the beach yet? No, I have not because I haven't been to the beach since I had it. Unfortunately, I haven't. If I went to the beach, it would be on my wrist, though, for sure. That's one advantage to uh, the titanium is that titanium alloy that they use in the Grand Seiko is actually more corrosion resistant than the 904L stainless steel that, that, uh, that Rolex uses. So it's even more corrosion resistant than that. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool attribute, attribute for the 231 stunner. By the way, I always put a link in the description of these videos to the page that gives all the details about the Grand Seiko, so just in case anybody wants to know that. Uh, let's see. Um, Craig, Rabe, Craig may be right on this Rolex, and when the Lady Brana has been wearing it for 40 years, she can turn to GS. There you go. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, we're going to look at all the GSs, too. We're going to look at that and see if they have something for the ladies that would be that would make sense but uh, I, I get the feeling that most of the ladies units do not, do not have screw down crowns and I know everybody's going to say it doesn't matter and all this but I think for an everyday all the time watch that you want to have waterproof and use in all kinds of circumstances I think the screw down crown is a plus because it anchors it securely and you know you have to definitively unscrew it to pull it out you don't you can't accidentally pull it out or whatever uh, I think it's a plus and so I think we should go that direction but I might be convinced otherwise if we see something that that uh, Steve has that is awesome and he swears up and down that it's going to be fine it's possible we could go that way but we shall see what we shall see. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, good show. Uh, Mr. Q, rose gold will look great on Brie. No, no, rose gold. No. <laughs> Come on, guys. That's like saying a tutor would look great on Brie. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Let me, I better expose the um, 002. I better fully expose the 002 because you guys don't seem to understand Let's go ahead and hit them with a little bit of yellow gold here <clears throat> so they'll hopefully understand. <clears throat> Lance is in the house. I think that bracelet is stock, but that the end links have been bent over time because the watch is so old. Maybe. Maybe, Lance. I don't know, though. Kyle's in the house. We need the Carlos pull test on the 231. I did in an early broadcast. I submerged the 231 and live on the show in H2O. I did that with the 005 also. So there you go. I have not done it with the 002. I have not submerged this one. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, all right. I'm going to show Bree's uh, I'm going to show Bree's website one more time. The lovely Bree. And I'm going to give you guys another moment or two to figure out if there's anything else we have to talk about. Otherwise, I think we've done it. I think we've got it. By George, we've got it. And uh, just uh, think about what we talked about. Think about the, the, the idea of elegance. Elegance. And treating your lady right. Okay. There's nothing wrong with spoiling a, a, a beautiful lady. There's nothing wrong with spoiling a beautiful lady. That's okay. That's doable. 
that's okay and think about that uh, let's see Chi <clears throat> uh, Town says 231 is an ISO certified divers watch Carlos pool test is is no sweat for it Chi Town in the house yeah, 231 is a heavy-duty piece. I, I'm telling you, the um, the crown on that puppy is robust. When you unscrew that thing, it just it doesn't wiggle at all. It just it's rock freaking solid. You can tell that thing is serious, serious construction quality. And Kyle says, I won't believe it until I see it. Um, <laughs> oh, you need the 231 test. Our wag says, enjoyed the broadcast ship. Have a great evening and enjoy your dinner. There you go. Okay, he's given us the, the approval to wrap up, which is good, which is good. So there you go. Let's take one more look at that stunning 231, and we're going we're gonna to say good night. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And thank you, lovely Lady Bree, for calling in. The lovely Lady Bree, BreeFitDance.com. <laughs>